So what specifically sparked yesterday's tweet for you? Sure. So I, first of all, Teresa, thank you for the opportunity to explain some of the background. Um, yeah, so th th one of the um, important things was, um, well, basically, so Bill Marno was on uh, CBC Radio on the National News Cycle. He was quoted as saying that they basically cut BC off from equalization payments, which we've paid into more than, so coming from the finance minister was a bit of a, of a joke to hear that kind of thing. Um, so basically my response was, you know, if they're gonna try everything they can to try to push this pipeline project through British Columbia, which is not in British Columbia's best interest, then we're gonna pull out all the stops too and you know, utilize any idea or any um, kind of action that we can to say, this is not gonna happen. You know, there's already a small pipeline there. And in today's, it's 2018, right? So we need to look at um, moving to alternative energy sources and helping the world do that as well. We're a fairly wealthy country and we have the capacity to be able to do that. We're already industrialized. There's a lot of countries that aren't. Our per capita emissions are terrible and we need to have some fairly bold action to change that. And if we're exporting fossil fuels to other countries and then negates any um, positive change that we make, then like, what's the point? Mm -hmm. Now, in your tweet, um, you mentioned equalization payments. Now, BC hasn't received yeah. equalization payments since 2009. Yeah, uh, so was there, it was more like was, 140 characters, Canada health transfers and social, right, but those Canada two social are, transfers that, right. that didn't you know, right. fit into the 140 characters, so I had to choose a word. Okay, so you meant transfer, the not, transfer payments. The yeah. transfer payments. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there's obviously been some backlash um, from... A lot uh, of, yeah, a lot of right-wing people or people that, you know, support the pipeline. Terry Lake was the environment minister yes. when Christy Clark announced that they supported it. Yeah. So that kind of thing. Or actually, he was the health minister at that point, but it didn't really make a difference yeah. because when he was the environment minister, the only thing he really talked about was economic development mm -hmm. and, um, you know, balancing the two yeah. rather than, you know letting the ministers involved with economic development talk about that and him talk about, you know, clean air and clean water and that sort of thing. So, you know, I, I, I have a lot of background. I've been a politician since 2011, an elected politician. And I, I, when, I, when I see BS, I call it out. So, but what do you say to those people? We had um, uh, Peter Milbar's wife saying, you know, you can't play the young card anymore. Um, we have right. Terry Lake say... Exactly. They're all part of that same group. Right. So, like, how do you... The right, right group for BC. How do you respond to that? The way, the way I did, I, I call them on and I, and if they're, all, they're, if they're, you know, trying to sink the debate to a certain level or they're trying to divert attention away from the actual issue, which is the pipeline and the twinning, it's not actually twinning because they're using the same corridor, they're putting in a second pipeline, but the new pipeline compared to the old pipeline is twice the diameter. So the law of circles, that's three or four times the volume. So the current pipeline, if this other pipeline goes ahead, will only be 20 percent of the capacity of that corridor of two, the two pipelines. It's way more fossil fuels. It's diluted bitumen. It's the most raw product. It's like sending uh, raw logs offshore. It's the same idea. If we processed, even if we processed some of it and sent it through the existing as a concentrated product, it would benefit Canada a lot more. The Half the jobs in any industry are in the manufacturing and the secondary industry. How serious are you, though, about separation? Or was this something well, to just piss people off? Canada, like, if you look at Quebec, the history of Quebec, and that was the reason I mentioned, I mentioned Montreal, was that um, Quebec, you know, they haven't separated, but even the idea of separation has gained them a lot of traction on a variety of issues. It's protected their language and their culture, arguably. And I think the same goes for British Columbia. Like. The natural world is much more important to British Columbians and their lifestyle and their way of life than it is to some other parts of the country, like Saskatchewan or something like that maybe is but in that area. Agriculture would be more important. So we have different cultural differences between Quebec and BC, but it doesn't mean that we couldn't, you know, work towards our own, you know, control of our own natural environment and our own autonomy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you got much support from your tweet? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, can you list anyone? Um, anyone well, notable? Not... Any sitting politician? 
Uh, no, no city politicians. Though you know, Terry Lake was the you know number one, and his wife Lisa Lake. So her Twitter account also tweeted, and Leanne Millibar. So th I don't think there's any city politicians that have come out on either side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, to answer the question. So you've obviously been an opponent of the expansion project. Um, yeah, I well, I, I like to frame it that I am pro environment and mm -hmm. I'm pro, you know. Um, um, addressing climate change. Mm -hmm. And so how do you feel about kind of BC being criticized for standing in Kinnamorgan's way? Um, I think that it's uh, like a good a good thing and I, th I don't know how it'll all shake out in the end between the, the provincial and the, or the, the provincial um, premier and the Alberta premier but I think something will happen Possibly not. That would be the ideal outcome. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know exactly what's going to happen because mm -hmm. it is um, provincial jurisdiction at the end of the day, which is why you know I mentioned that concept because if if BC or vast majorities of BC were to become autonomous from the country known as Canada, then we would have more control over what happens within our our boundaries. Mm -hmm. Uh, what do you say to proponents of the project that um, suggest, well, the oil will come out of the ground anyway and a pipeline is much safer than by rail car? Yeah, so that is uh, rhetoric that the company has peddled for a long time and I actually asked the CEO of Trans Mountain at a Thompson Nicola Regional District meeting and he said in response to that question regarding, you know, rail versus pipeline, he said, so what my question was, will this capacity all come off of rail because they were leveraging the lac megalantique disaster saying you know this that was their line for months after that was it's safer than by rail so i said is the capacity going to come off of rail and he said no it's going to be rail plus mm -hmm. it's not going to be either or mm -hmm. so it's not they they're using that disaster which i think is despicable to sit to, to try to pedal their project but it's going to be the rail that's happening now plus this pipeline mm -hmm. so I, yeah, I think, and, and that's not very well known, right. that, that they, it would be added capacity, it wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't be like all the rail tankers wouldn't just stop, that those would be happening, those rail cars, you know, they're not, they're already built, they're going to keep using them for something. Do you drive? Yeah. yeah. What about people who say, well, stop driving, stop yeah. taking an airplane, everything yeah. is made of plastic? Yeah, like, no, what? I try to lead by example, and, mm -hmm. you know, like society is the way it is right now and you can only kind of push the barrier so much like I drove I drive but I also do this and I also you know, I can slip off a shoe I also do this you so are. it's like there's all sorts of different things that people can do on an individual basis to you know speak like what they believe through actions and I try to do that as much as possible like I wrote a a column in the paper before getting elected and I said that the most important thing for any politician is to lead by example. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, are you going to run? In the next municipal? Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Anything else? No.